All right, so how are you guys doing today? Very good. Perfect. All right, so uh, let's do the uh, chapter two again. All right, so uh, last time we talked, you guys keep watching the videos on YouTube channel, right? So make sure you go to YouTube channel and find the uh, Jenkin One lecture so you can watch them. Uh, so you can follow up the other uh, things we've done on the previous lecture. So anyway, the last time we talked about the uh, nomenclature, how we're going to name the compounds and so forth. The first one was ionic compound. Ionic compound. So ionic compound simply means uh, if you have uh, some the cation and anion, uh, we'll have uh, some ionic bond. They'll make an uh, ionic bond. This is kind of makes sense that the cation is the ion that has positive charge. The anion is the one that has a negative charge. So as you know, if you have a plus and minus, uh, they're going to have some uh, interaction uh, by following the Coulomb's law, because it's the opposite charge. So they can have a really good ionic bond. So this is why they're going to form ionic compound. So once again, uh, we're going to cover this later this semester. But if you look at the periodic table, uh, the one you see on the left side of the uh, periodic table will be the one that become a cation. Normally, they're all metal. And the one on the right side of the periodic table, this is the one that has become a negatively charged in ion form, which you can find on the right side of the um, <coughs> periodic table. So if it be these two, metal cation, you can see on the left side, non-metal, uh, they're going to make the ion bonds. So in this case, when you name something like uh, sodium chloride, so the way we name this compound is very simple because we know sodium is for in the first column in your periodic table means it's on the left side. Um, so it is obviously metal. So only thing that is not metal on the left side is hydrogen. So hydrogen would be the good exception. Uh, but other than hydrogen, everything should be just metal. So it initially, it has a sodium cation. And the chlorine, if you look at the chlorine, it's actually the second last column on the periodic table. So we know by just looking at the location of the periodic table, it's non-metal. So chlorine is non-metal. So initially, the sodium is metal, positively charged cation. Chlorine will become uh, anion. So when they do interaction over there, they're going to make plus and minus charge and interaction that makes ionic bond. So this would become ionic compounds. In this case, only thing you have to do is whenever you see this sodium, so when we make some chemical formula, this is what we call chemical formula. Uh, when we try to make some chemical formula, you're always going to place the one you see on the more left side of the periodic table first, and the one on the right side next. So this is why I didn't write chlorine sodium. I wrote sodium chlorine because of the sodium is right on the left column. Chlorine is on the right. This is why I uh, write it this way in chemical formula. And in this case, whenever it comes to the name, the whenever you see the, the one on the left, the first one, just copy the whole full name. So just sodium, right? Sodium. And then the next one, you just need to know one more thing to do. For this one is chlorine, right? This is chlorine. Okay. And then just change this last part as I, D, E. That's it. That's all you need to know. So this is the reason why I call this compound sodium chloride, not sodium chlorine. Okay. So this is how we uh, made a way to name the I compound. So uh, there's only a couple more things that you need to know for this one is um, whenever you have a magnesium instead to the chlorine or fluorine and so on. So uh, the first rule I kind of want you to know because you all need to look at the periodic table over there. So when you look at the periodic table, you see the first column on the far left, the column in the periodic table, that is what we call group one, okay? And the next column is group two. And you see the like a really big, like a 10 columns next to it. 
that's what we call D-block, you ignore it and jump to the right next top one, this the, if you can see the uh, over there, that's the third column and fourth, so whenever you look at the over there you just jump this okay, you just ignore this one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is eight, okay so if you have uh, those ones You're gonna call this group. This is the first column, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Okay. So this is eighth. We're gonna call this group one because it's in the first first um, column. This is group two, group three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So um, we're gonna do that again on octet rule one day. Then all the elements in the iron form that wants to go to uh, the state of the ones in the last column, we call this noble gas. Okay. So noble gas simply means uh, that is something that doesn't do anything. Um, so this is what we name this one is noble gas. Okay. So if you have something like this one, uh, you, the one in the in the first column, group one elements, will have a plus one charge. But if you look at the magnesium here, that's in the second column. So this is in group two elements, and then it will have a two plus instead of plus one. Yes. And then third same, if you look at the aluminum, we'll have a plus three instead of plus one or two, because it's in group three. Okay. And then four, you just stop. Okay. And now seven, six, fifth, you actually count it from the backward now. So this is still nothing. So you, yeah, this is the last column. So if you have one column right next to the last column, which is group seven, it's negative one. Group six, negative two. Group five, negative three. Okay? So in that way, the chlorine is the column right next to the last column in your periodic table. So that is negative one. Because it's just one column away from the last one. So this is why it has always negative one. Okay? So if that is the case, if that is the case, the ionic compounds, you know, to make the one neutral compound, there has to be two chlorine to make neutral compound with one magnesium two plus charge. Because if you just have a magnesium chloride like this, you still have a one remaining plus charge. Because each magnesium cation, cation will carry two plus charge but each chlorine and I only carry the negative one. So to make the neutral ionic compound has to be two. So in chemical formula for this ionic compound will be MgCl2, not one. So sodium was just fine, because sodium only had a plus one, negative one, it's just, just perfect there. Uh, but still, whenever you write this one in the name, you can still call that magnesium chloride, that's, that's no problem. Because the as we talk about the where they are in the periodic table, we know magnesium for sure will have a two plus charge. So even though people will tell you that oh I had a magnesium chloride, you you already automatically know there'll be MgCl2, not MgCl anyway. So the bottom line here is for ionic compounds, you don't have to worry about the chemical formula too much when you name those compounds. So you already know how many of each should be there for chemical formula. Makes sense, right? So the can you guys kind of give a little bit of work? So if you have a aluminum chloride, okay. The if you look at the aluminum, it's in the third column. So because we're skipping that the bottom D block over there. So it's one, two, three. So meaning aluminum in the ion form should have three plus charge. But the chlorine is still again in the uh, second last one, so it'll be negative one. So if you want to make a chemical formula for aluminum chloride, how many chlorine should be there to be neutral? Three, perfect. So this way, yeah, we're gonna have this one, okay? Aluminum chloride will be a L C L three, not one or two, okay, with three. Perfect. But once again, because we know the charge of each group elements, that's why you don't have to worry about the numbers for the name.
but only for the chemical formula. Uh, still be aluminum, just full name, chlorine, but just change the ID at the end. So be aluminum chloride. That that's okay. Okay, because we know how many will be there anyway by looking at the periodic table. Okay, so this is actually a quite easy way to name the compound. Okay, so any compound is relative to be speaking easier to just put the name for it because it's just the you know full name of the cation part and just little change of that in ID they will make. So how about this one? This is the sodium. This fluorine there, the fluorine. So it's a fluor, right? Sodium fluoride. Okay. Sodium bromide, sodium iodide, and so forth. Okay. So anyway, <coughs> uh, so the next one we talked on the last lecture was a molecular compound. So this is different from ionic compound because the those are the uh, the elements are making a chemical bond between only non-metal. So there is no metal making a bond to in this compound. It's all non-metal to non-metal bonding. So good example would be N2O5. Okay? And here, uh, if you look at the nitrogen, it's uh, right next to the oxygen. If you look at the periodic table. So this is why I didn't write O5 and 2 because the nitrogen is a bit more on the left side of the periodic table than oxygen if you look at it right over there. Okay? So this is why I write it nitrogen first and oxygen first. But the problem is in this case they did not make ionic bonds because they did not use a clear formal charge difference to make a bond but they just a, use a regular uh, chemical molecular bond um, we're gonna cover that later uh, semester. So we call this not ionic compound, just molecular compounds that way. So in this case, if I just say nitrogen, oh, this is oxygen, so same, oxygen, right? Okay, and you just remove the last part and you keep just oxide. Okay? So uh, if that is the case, I'm gonna if I'm gonna say this is nitrogen oxide, then people will be confused because. Uh, we there's no way because it's not an ionic compounds anymore. We don't know how many of nitrogen and oxygen will be there for that compounds. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna what we're gonna do is the we number this nitrogen is still whole same name because in the one on the left, we only change the one on the right, which is IDE oxide. And all you only need to do is the, you have to now number the each. Because the uh, unlike the ongoing you know, uh, ionic compounds, now we have to indicate how many for each. Because the people will not understand if we don't say it in the name. So if there is a two, uh, we're gonna say die. So uh, if there is one mono, but you don't have you don't normally ignore the mono because it's just one. We already know it's mono. Di, tri, tetra, pent, hex, and uh, so on. But anyway, for this case, di means two. That's why we're gonna say di nitrogen. To indicate there's two nitrogen instead of one. And now there's five, so, so we're gonna put pent. It means five. So it becomes nitrogen pentoxide. Okay? So if I give you another example here, if you have a, I just made up the molecular uh, compound chemical formula right here. Now you have a two phosphorus and four oxygen here. And in this case, what you just need to do, so the first one, so I put the phosphor first because it's more on the left than oxygen. So, but there's two, so this will become diphosphorus. That's the whole name, right? But just there are two, so it'll be diphosphorus. Four is tetra, so it will be tetroxide. So this is diphosphorus tetroxide, okay? So how about, can you guys do this one maybe? So this is NO2. So like I said, you don't have to say mono because we can easily just ignore mono because this is one. And this will be just the nitrogen, but there's oxygen, right? But there are two, so it'll be nitrogen dioxide. Perfect, that's it. That's perfect. So um, this is um, only thing you should know uh, from the ionic compounds. 
Only thing you have to do additionally to the molecular compound is just numbering each uh, because there's no formal charge to use for ionic compound. So in this case, we have to indicate how many for each in this element, uh, the, I mean the compounds. So there was a quick review that we did last time. So we went into the more kind of a relatively speaking a bit more complicated uh, nomenclature for acid here. So uh, you can also watch this one on the YouTube channel again, uh, but I'm gonna make it quite brief movie again. So acid simply means the whatever the compounds that donates, that donates the hydrogen cation. So once again, hydrogen is also in the group one, so it become positive, one positive charge when it's in ion, ion four. So, but uh, if you guys remember from the like, previous lecture, Hydrogen is on the top left corner of the periodic table that you start the atomic number with first. So meaning, hydrogen has number one as its atomic number. So atomic number of hydrogen is uh, one. And atomic number, once again, same as number of proton. Okay. So meaning, hydrogen has only one proton there. And also, interestingly, atomic mass number on here is also one. So atomic mass number, just quick we again, mass number, is just simply numbers of protons plus numbers of neutrons. So you, you know there is one proton there, but there only one for atomic mass number, meaning you have a one proton there plus x will be one. So we know, oh, there's no nitrogen for hydrogen there. If regular hydrogen, you have, yeah, anyway, I'll move on. There's some hydrogen, but anyway. So the, you have a one, one for each. So if, if this one has to be neutral, it has one proton, which is a positive charge. So hydrogen also has one electron. Uh, so that makes neutral formal charge on here. So hydrogen is just simply one proton, one electron, that's it. That's what hydrogen is. But hydrogen cation is what? They now lost the electron, which is negative charge. So if hydrogen lose electron, okay, it's just simply the same as one proton. So hydrogen cation is the same as one proton. Okay. So if any compound donates hydrogen cation, or you can say proton, uh, we can define the compound as acid. So any compounds that give us the proton well, hydrogen cat are the same thing. We now say, oh, that's acid there, okay? So I'll give you some example here in two major categories, I'll say, okay? So the first one is what we call binary acid, okay? And the other one we call this is the oxy acid, okay? So binary acid is very simple actually, because uh, it literally means binary, like one, 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 two. So HCl is pretty good one to uh, practice with. So HCl is literally one hydrogen, one chlorine. So it it's indeed has a binary structure. So when it goes into the water, they become ionized. But once again, this is on the left, this is on the right on the periodic table. This will have a positive charge, this will have a negative charge, okay? So they become H plus plus Cl minus. So this is a cation anion. So this compound will indeed give us what? Hydrogen cation and aqueous medium. Like hydrogen cation and chlorine anion over here. So this is definitely a good example of binary acid. One, one, it also give us the proton uh, and the um, uh, medium. So if that is the case, we can call this, we can put it in the binary acid categories. And only thing you have to know for naming this uh, acid here is the, you see the hydrogen here, right? So hydrogen, you switch that one to the not hydrogen at this time, it changes to hydro. Okay, so you, you change this one, the binary acid hydro. And this is a chlorine, right? This chlorine here, just copy the chlorine here. So hydrochlorine, uh, but this is now we know it's acid, right? So we only need to change, not at this time, not IDE, 
but we're going to change this to IC acid here. Okay? So it becomes hydrochloric acid now. Okay? So whenever you see this chemical formula on the bottle, that means you have hydrochloric acid there in that bottle. Because this is how we name those uh, type of the binary acid uh, compounds. Makes sense, right? Do you have any questions or anything? We're good? Perfect. So maybe you can try this one again with the other one. So how about this one? This is also a binary acid because there's only one hydrogen, one bromine there. So this is, a, once again, not hydrogen in the nomenclature. It will become hydro. And this is a bromine, but we're going to change the end part of the bromine to IC acid. So this become hydrobromic acid. So whenever you want to name the compound in the chemical formula of HBr, hydrogen and bromine, you can call them hydrobromic acid. That's, that, that's the only rule for binary acid. Makes sense, right? Okay. So maybe, uh, can you guys name this one? So this is a fluorine, fluorine. So this is a hydrofluoric acid, perfect. This is hydrofluoric acid. Perfect. That's it. That's all you need to know. Okay. So we done with here. Okay. Uh, the problem is this one. Uh, the problem is this one uh, because this is a lot of rule more to memorize for this one to name the compound. Okay. So I'll tell you why. Uh, one good example I can give you is the HNO3. Okay. So uh, the so deep for this comes in the water and this medium becomes H plus uh, hydrogen cation and NO3 minus. Okay? So this is cation, this is anion, but the, the funny thing here is it's not binary because it's not just hydrogen and something, but some other things more, more than once. I mean nitrogen, three oxygen are bond to each other. So those are the one that become anion. Okay? This is a cation. Obviously, you mean proton, but cation. And if your anion part of the compound is more than one element, we call this oxy acid. Because normally they come with a lot of numbers of oxygen. That's why you call this oxy acid. Or you can call this polyatomic anion. Okay? So, meaning it just poly means many, many, many something. So, when you think about the plastic, it's just simply a lot of uh, monomer make a link to the polymer chain that makes uh, plastic. So poly simply means a many of something. And the atomic means there are uh, numbers of atomic make a one big anion. So this is why we call this polyatomic anion. So whenever you have this type of a more bigger complex ion and the acid form, we call this uh, oxy acid. If it's not just one one element, we binary what we just did before, okay? Makes sense, right? Okay, so if that is the case, uh, this is also acid because it also gives us hydrogen cation, but we have a different way to name this type of compound. So uh, first thing, what you need to uh, memorize is the you need to before we name the acid here, the oxy acid here, we need to know how to name the anion first. I'll tell you why. Okay, so this is the part you kind of have to memorize. So. I will give you a really good table for you to just memorize in the uh, study guide for exam one. Uh, by the way, we still have about four weeks until the first the exam, because uh, uh, it will be mid-February. But anyway, I'll give you a good study guide table so you can just know only, there are few polyatomic anions that frequently we use as chemists, so you don't have to memorize them all, you just need to memorize four, three or four, that will be all, okay? So anyway, this is the first one. This is the one that we call, we just give a name for it. It's a nitrogen, but with oxygen, it's nine to rate. So only thing what we did for this, so the, I'm not naming the compound here yet. I'm just naming this anion part uh, still. So this one, we call it, it's a nitrogen, nitrogen, but only thing I did was putting now AT. Not ID, ICS, it's just AT for this one. So this is a nitrate anion, okay, nitrate anion. So we just pick the one that is quite common as uh, the nitrogen, the three oxygen here. 
So we named it as the nitrate over here, okay? So that means uh, we, we have another name for it. That is the, if it's NO2 minus, okay? NO2 minus, in this case, this is one less oxygen than your nitrate one, AT1, right? So then we name this the 9 to right, IT, okay? This is one less is IT, okay? So, uh, th so this one you have to memorize. So nitrogen with the three oxygen, with the negative charge, we just named it nitrate because it's common in, so we, we put the I, instead of IT or ICS, and now at this time it's an NI, so we're gonna put AT. Uh, just, this is how we just uh, try to uh, make, make it work, okay? So if it's nitrate and nitric acid here, I'll tell you why it's so important here. So whenever you find any polyatomic anion that with the ATE, only thing you have to do is change that ATE to same like you did in the, uh, the binary acid, IC acid here. So if that is an anion, but if that bond to the hydrogen cation, they become HNO3, right? Now it's neutral. Okay, so now it's acid here. And this name will be nitric acid. Because what I just did is I just changed the AT part of anion to the IC acid over there. So HNO3, it, that whose name is nitric acid. Simply uh, ATE to IC acid over here. Okay? So how about the one that has IT instead of AT? So if that is the case that we have HNO2, not 3, okay? That one with the nitride anion, then we just change it to OUS acid here, okay? So this will become not nitric acid, it will be nitrose acid here, okay? So this is why uh, it is important for us to memorize these two first. Because the, if you don't know which one is the one that has AT name for the anion form, it's impossible to find the name for the whole the acid compound uh, in the first place, okay? So uh, uh, there's a one more thing I'm gonna show you. So let me try to read it again. <clears throat> so HNO3, is nitric acid because it comes with the NO3 minus that is nitrate, okay? And the NHNO2 is the nitro, nitrose acid because it comes from NO2 minus is nitrite, okay? So uh, just we're gonna uh, curve a little bit more on top and bottom. Meaning, how about we have HNO4? So you have even more than one that has the AT name uh, anion part. And then only thing you have to do is to keep this one, okay? Keep this one, but just put per, per, okay? So P-E-R per nitric. Acid, okay? Uh, because per means uh, more than what it has. So you have a nitric acid that has a three oxygen in it and the an anion four. Now it has four. So per means it's exceeding more. So it's a per nitric acid will indicate this one, HNO4. Uh, interestingly, we have another one on the bottom here is HNO. In this case, it's lacking one oxygen from even the nitrous one. So you keep this one, nitrous acid here, but it has one less oxygen than the nitrous one, so we put hypo, meaning it's a, uh, uh, missing, uh, lacking something. So we can name this HNO as a hyponitrous acid there, okay? So the key point here is the Whatever the polyatomic acid, you need to memorize the one that has AT name of the anion. 
then you, you can name anything else, literally. Because the only thing you have to know is the AT comes with the IC acid, less than one OUS acid, less than even one is a hypo, even higher than IC is a per. Um, so I'll give you one more example. So this is uh, another one. Okay, this is another one, H to SO4. So uh, obviously this is not binary because it has more than one. One third for four oxygen making an anion part. So in this case, we also have a name with the ATE for this anion. So this anion becomes negative two because it will be two, become two hydrogen cation. So anyway, this is negative two because of this one, H2SO4. So this one has a negative two. So uh, this one, uh, if you look at this one here, this is a sulfur. This is a sulfur, right? Sulfur. And then, ah, sorry. <clears throat> if you put this, we choose this one as a maybe common anion, okay, polyatomic anion. We just do the same AT. So only thing you have to memorize for nitrogen, three oxygen is the one that has ATE. But it's not same as for all the other elements, no. For sulfur here, four is the one that would take the AT now. Okay, kind of makes sense. So in this case, SO4 two minus will be the one that has ATE. Meaning, how about this one? SO3 two minus will be so, so not AT, but IT, so it'll be so five, perfect. There you go. Now we know what well, we know, everything that you, I should know to name any other form of this one, okay? I'll show you. So we know this one has the one that is sulfate, which is AT name. So this is a sulfuric acid. I just changed this one to the IC acid here. So furic acid here. Uh, same here, the one less H2SO3 now, now we know it's a IT, but you change it to OUS acid here, right? So this will become what? So, viewers, perfect. Wow, you guys, great. <laughs> you got everything. So only thing that you really need to memorize for this one is this one, sulfate. That's it. Uh, and then H2SO2, this will be hypo sulfurous acid okay and if it's more than one we per sulfuric acid that is for h2so5 okay. uh, so you guys see the same way to put the names right so technically speaking you only need to know for the anion name that with ate then you don't have to memorize it at all because I know how it works in the system now. You just need to know this one uh, that you just actually have to memorize. Uh, but uh, this part, okay? I'll give you one more. Maybe you can try to do this real quick. <clears throat> so, okay. this is the phosphoric acid here. Um, so meaning uh, this will give us three Eventually, eventually that we want. There's the steps. I just make it very brief. Uh, so forgive me. Uh, but the eventually, meaning this one has a three negative charge uh, because it will give us the three proton eventually. One, 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 one. But anyway, so this is the one that has the AT name, which is phosphate. So this is a phosphorus. This is the phosphorus, but has uh, the one we given a name with AT. So now we can. Uh, name it like a phosphate anion. So if that is the case, this will become just what? Phosphoric acid. So you change this one to the IT acid there. So this will just become, oh, phosphoric acid there, okay? So if that is the case, maybe I can give you H3PO3, okay? Three instead, okay? So then, uh, what might be the name of this one? So this one will have actually phos phosphide, okay, phosphide. And this will become phosphorus acid, perfect, okay? 
So this will become phosphorus acid if it's even one less B hypophosphorus acid if it's even more than four B per phosphoric acid. Same. All the same. Okay. Kind of makes sense, right? Kind of makes sense? Okay, good. All right, so uh, that's it for the nomenclature for ionic compounds, molecular compounds, and some binary and oxy acid here. Uh, I promise you, before the exam date, I'm going to have a numbers of review session. So I'm going to give you more practical problems anyway. Uh, but this is kind of the things that it says on the chapter 2. Uh, so the later part of the chapter 2 is about the organic compounds. I only have 5 minutes because we're going to have a 10 minute extra credit chance today. Uh, so, but anyway, so we have a... Uh, next one is what we call organic compound. Uh, so uh, this one, obviously, I'm not going to do much on the nomenclature, but I'll just a little bit, okay? So organic compound simply means uh, any compound is uh, mainly composed of carbon and hydrogen. Okay. <clears throat> so if we have a certain compound that's uh, simply all made by the carbon and hydrogen, or mostly carbon and hydrogen, you can you can confidently say, oh, this is organic compound. Okay. So uh, maybe I can give you one example. It will be uh, this one. So if you look at this one over here, there's two carbons and six hydrogens are chemically bond each other. So this is a good example of organic compounds because this is mainly just carbon and hydrogen, that's all. So this is a obviously a good example of organic, organic compounds. Um, to explain what kind of bond they made over here between carbons or carbon to hydrogen, um, we actually need to get to the uh, chapter 4 or 5 is the electric configuration form uh, but I'll tell you very brief okay uh, you don't have to remember this one uh, but later for the chapter but I'll just briefly explain okay. uh, the, this is the bond that we call covalent bond I'm gonna repeat again uh, next uh, in month or so uh, this semester, but we call this covalent bond uh, because the, <clears throat> the H carbon here and here in the hydrogen have a certain numbers of electrons. Electrons, okay? They have a certain number of electrons, but on the most outer shell, meaning the electrons are located in the most like on the edge. Uh, so. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll cover it again. Okay, just listen to me to the ones. Uh, so if they have uh, electrons on the like a okay, so this is a carbon atom. There's a uh, nucleus in the center. If electrons are kind of moving, right? But electrons on the far outermost shell will be the one they can easily use. Think about it. If you have electrons on the closer length, closer orbits. Well, we're gonna talk of the orbit soon. Those are the one cannot be easily easily used because the, this is close to the nucleus which is positively charged. So whenever this carbon or the hydrogen wants to use the electron, it's better for them to lose the one on the most far away from them. Because this one will experience the less force to here. It's, it's far away from them. So that is why <clears throat> the valence electron uh, we call the ones on the electron, the far most outer shell, we have a special name for it, it's valence electron. We're gonna learn this about soon, uh, next month maybe. And then uh, this is the electron, only electron they can use for making chemical bonds. So carbon has four of them, because it's in the group four. Carbon is one, two, three, four. So carbon has four valence electron. Okay, for on the outer shell, not in total, okay? just on the outer shell. And hydrogen has only one because it's on the group one. So it's just the one valence electron. And simply what they do is just they try to find a good space to share their each electron form there. Okay? So one from hydrogen, one from carbon. So they, they find a really good space where can, they can share the electron together. 
um, they they want to share the electrons because the, they want to follow the octet rule, uh, which also I'm going to cover uh, next month. So I'll stop here. But the key point here, they all commonly bonded uh, in carbon to carbon or carbon to hydrogen, and that means it's mainly composed of carbon and hydrogen. We can call it an organic compound. I will do more on uh, organic compound next week. Okay, I'll stop here. <clears throat>